So Kayla, my wife, um, is actually a really big inspiration for what we're doing. Um, you know, I've pretty much had a very good, I'll call it genetic base um, for my life. I haven't really struggled with a lot of health conditions um, that I'm aware of, and I think I really took that for granted. Um, and it really hasn't been until the last year or two that I have um, really thought about my health. I've been working out a lot. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty small person, all that kind of stuff, don't have any major illnesses. But as I get older, I realize, wow, life is more than just about uh, going and playing basketball all day or just working out, not even knowing what I'm eating, not knowing what time to eat, what to eat, all that kind of good stuff. And really, Kayla was, is and was my first inspiration and coach when it came to managing the body. Um, and I think there's two reasons why Kayla is so knowledgeable about this. I'd say, number one, um, she's had life challenges. Uh, her own fitness journey in general requires her to have a higher level of body IQ, I'll call it, um, than probably the average person. Uh, and because of that, she has learned a lot. Um, and so when I finally came around, you know, um, you know, I, if I had health questions, I'd ask Kayla because she knows so much about it. Also, Kayla, um, uh, she's an occupational therapist by trade. She's a doctor and occupational therapist. So her own training um, from a therapy perspective kind of gives her an interesting bent on it. Um, and so together, uh, along with really Pastor Chris's book, The Four Cups, and I know uh, I, everything's on mute, but I, I wanted to ask you guys if you had um, – Read the four. If any of you had read the four cups, uh, Kathy, I know you have, right? Right. I'm reading it again. Mom, you can borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I Mom, have not I read it. it. Who said that? Dion. Dion. Madeline has not read it yet. Oh, Madeline. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I know. I think Carrie said she picked it up um, and may have read it. I did. I read it. Uh, she read it. Okay. And and just in our opinion, when Kayla and I read that book. Uh, it changed our lives, and I don't think people really realize just how deep that book is, uh, The Four Cups. Um, but uh, before I go on too far there, Kayla, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, but did you have anything that you wanted to kind of say? Or Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm just really excited. I'm sure Martin and I will have a chance um, to say this maybe some other time, but, you know, we have been excited about Lifetime um, being built before it was ever even <laughs> a thought. It was just a, a plot of land, and we've kind of watched its development and prayed about um, being able to um, just to bring people together around faith and fitness. And you know, it's as you, I'm sure, all have have witnessed. Um, and much like Dion said, it is hard to find people that um, love both and that recognize. Um, that truly, you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and because God uh, fashioned us as he has, you know, it, it's a great thing for us to be able to understand how to help our bodies function well and help us to optimize um, feeling good and living a good long time. So I just wanted to say there's there's no um, teacher-like necessity, <laughs> as Martin has already alluded to, um, and I'm sure at some point we can talk more about <laughs> various health challenges, but, um, but yeah, I always had a fascination, which later became something that I needed. Thankfully, I was already interested and passionate about learning um, about health and um, our anatomy and physiology, like why things work the way they do, and then we were able to just kind of take it from there. So anyhow, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Okay, well, good. I'm going gonna, um, gonna to add some things that I kind of forgot to mention, but the overall of of our group is we will meet four times in June at 4 p.m. at Lifetime. As earlier, the, earlier, the general manager, his name is Tim King, and it's located in this city, by the way. He became a general manager a few months ago, um, and, is a, and he happens to go to Church of the Highlands, and he loves the Lord. He goes to small groups, and he and I and Kathy have made a great connection, and he's just opened the door of, of the gym. He's allowed us to, to put flyers around, talk about this, and is very open about it. He's given us a room, um, and some of these things we've been able to do we weren't able to do a long time ago. Um, and then also for our serve day, we have partnered with a group called CrossFit, 
um, which is kind of like a CrossFit, but it's it's a nonprofit small gym operation run by Libby Lassiter. Um, and she's basically the Woodlawn, Woodlawn Athletic Department, the Woodlawn High School students over there, and she runs workouts for the kids. And they talk about Christ and they work out, and that is just a beautiful thing. So it's kind of like a, a, a fitness group adopting a high school fitness group, if you will. And we're going to go over there. Just, but we, we'll talk a little bit more about this as time goes on. But one thing I know we're going to do is on July 11th, uh, that Saturday, July 11th, the serve day, we are going to uh, go over there and help them transport. They're going to move from one gym to a bigger gym, and we're going to move all their equipment over. Um, we'll probably do a little bit more than that, but that's a good overview, so we're really getting off really, really well with them on that. With that said, I want to ask a couple of – now we're going to talk a little bit about um, just the, the, the topics that we're going to be talking about um, as well as the heart of what we're doing here. Um, before I even go any more, one of the things we want to make sure too, which has really been accomplished, is we are we are making a statement. Uh, I think there's maybe nine of us on the call right now, and we're we're two or more come in agreement. There is Jesus' name, and what we're doing right now, and before we even say another word, whether you'd understand what we're saying or not, is we believe that we know that the country, America, and if not the world, is 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 injuring itself based on not being educated on what we're eating and all that stuff, and people are dying of diseases that can be prevented. And we believe it is the role of the church to be the voice of that and to lead the initiative um, of a better, healthier life. And that is the first part. And just you guys, the power of what you mean and what we can do as a group um, can be incredible. And so I love what Dion said about just wanting someone else to talk to and a culture of fitness starts with people always talking about it. So that's what we really want to do this summer is to be a spark for something that may come later. Maybe one of you might have a vision uh, for something that you want to do that we can support or you're already doing. So a big part of this is connecting those with a passion for fitness or sports or anything and just make it a bigger part of church culture. So I commend you for taking your own personal journey uh, so well as well as um, what we can possibly do to help our sisters and brothers in and outside of the church come closer to God and closer to their fitness goals. With that, I want to ask you, Kayla, do you, a lot of people wonder, does, is God even really interested in, in, in our fitness? Why is there, why should, why is Christians that we care about fitness? Is there any biblical link about that? Um, I think absolutely there's a link between health and the Bible. And, you know, the history, um, shows us that there are phenomenal human uh, feats that occurred, you know, in the Bible and in ancient times there were kind of supernatural um, examples um, that were given. And it's funny, you know, we're used to movies and things showing us Incredible Hulk and Iron Man and all of these guys um, that can do some pretty fantastic things. Um, And so we often look, you know, to movies in that regard, but we don't necessarily see our biblical ancestors um, as having these incredible human feats of physiological strength and stamina and things like that. But um, our spiritual journey can have um, that available to us. And I think being physically fit helps to ready us for God's use spiritually. So I think um, the short-term goals that we make and how we get there, the long-term goals, how we get there, those things help to um, sharpen us, you know, help for character development as well as other things. But let me give some examples um, that you can see in Scripture um, that talk about a link between really kind of health in and, and the Bible and, and what can happen. Um, if you read the story about Ruth and Naomi, they walked from Moab to Bethlehem, which was approximately 50 miles. That's like us cool. walking from Birmingham to Tuscaloosa. You know, that's really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Can you imagine on a day that's, you know, hot like this? Um, Samson was considered a one-man army. He was more powerful than the combined strength of 100 men. Um, Elijah ran at full sprint pace for approximately 30 miles, starting from the top of a mountain. Wow. Job lived an entire lifetime, and then God blessed him with another 140 years of life on earth in that same body. I think that's pretty impressive. You could essentially have started all the way over again and had a, a whole another career and a whole other life there. 
Moses yeah. was almost 80 years of age before God began using him to lead the people of Israel um, out from under the tyranny of uh, the tyranny of, of the Egyptians. And just keep in mind that Moses, you know, climbed all the way up to the top of a mountain. He didn't eat or drink anything for 40 days and then walked back down carrying two huge stone tablets. It's, it's said in, I think, Jewish culture that they were possibly met at a sapphire. They can imagine how whole, how, how heavy and how, um, <laughs> how, how important those tablets were to us. So right. just pretty phenomenal. Well, that's very, very amazing. So I know a lot of people on the call or whatever, we have our goal. Some of us, our goal is to lose weight. Um, some of us is to get stronger. Some of us is just to, man, can I just alleviate pain and not be in pain so much? We all have different circumstances that we're going for. So this small group is focused on, yes, those goals that you have that we talk about in the fitness world all together. But even in addition to that, you know, I encourage some of you who may have obtained, I mean, all of you, but some of you who may not have some of those concerns, tapping more into exactly what Kay was talking about. Is there a physical strength and a power that our biblical ancestors, you know, had that God gave them that we can tap into today. Um, so I guess my question is to you, Kayla, kind of where we're going is, are those abilities that Samson had, that Elijah had, are those just like, was that just back in the day? Is that just legend? Um, is, that, is that really available to us today? Or is that just, you know, what do you think about that? I think it is available to us. You know, I think um, there's so many things that we've kind of gotten away from in our culture, including a, con- a connection with him, a connection with understanding ourselves and how our bodies work. And so as we have a stronger relationship with God, I believe it will lead to, to greater health, health outcomes. I think intimacy um, with God allows for us to see the plan that he has in store for our lives. And I think, sure, there are definitely strategies that we're even going to talk about in the next four weeks that are helpful. But I also think there's some little nuances here and there that he sometimes um, makes us aware of that maybe is good for the masses, but for a minute, you know, a, a, a small number of people, um, maybe they need something that's slightly different. And I believe if we're in tune to him, you know, we'll have more of an understanding of that. So if there's a tightly woven relationship Um, between God, our bodies, and our soul, then I think um, we'll be able to witness the kinds of things that that occurred thousands of years ago. Wow. So that is is still available, um, and that's amazing. And the thing that I love about the discussions we're going to be having um, is, again, every discussion or every fitness goal, every fitness regimen, if you will, has to have a goal. If you join the Atkins plan, if you join whatever plan, the paleo diet, in my mind, that plan or whatever you're doing is only as strong as the vision that you have, your objectives. And I know I'm sure Carrie, she won a lot of uh, <laughs> she won a lot of medals. Bodybuilding. For, huh? I said bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. You know what I mean? I'm sure you have to have an objective. You know how much, what you have to look like or what form or how much you need to lift in order to be a certain way. And I would say the objective of this group um, is not only to get you to your next level, whatever it is that's on your mind, but also, and this is probably more so my goal than anything, is that I find it really interesting, and I'm really just echoing what Kayla just said, is that at the age of 80 years old, that's when Moses first heard from God. A lot of people don't think that's that when Moses started. Was first, <laughs> huh? That's when he got started. Yeah, 80 that's years old was when he got started. 80 years old. Uh, you know, and, and the last one is Job. So really it's the older people that I'm motivated by than necessarily the young. Whenever I hear someone in the age, age and beauty to me, they go hand in hand. And so when you see someone like Job who lived an entire life and at the age, and then he starts over a new life and lives an additional 140 years. And those are things that we don't really talk about in the church. Those are things that are available to us, and I think that's Kayla was going. So if those things are available, Kayla, real quickly, how do, what, is, what is the link? What's the missing link? Um, why are we not doing that today, you think? Well, um, I think there's just a, a lack of of communication or relationship between um, our spirit, body, and our soul. And, you know, some of us already mentioned, um, I think about four of us maybe have, have read The Four Cups, um, which Pastor Chris Hodges wrote, and it explores the hidden gift of transcending. It looks at superhuman, mm-hmm. um, at how we can actually 
um, have a greater relationship with God. And I think it um, really points us, you know, if we're, if we're open to it, it can also point us to that superhuman prowess. It helps us to be able to um, to have greater human functioning and spirit and soul, um, you know, just from applying the four cups. You know, it's, it's really just another name for what was referred to as Seder or Passover or Pesach, mm-hmm. which some of you may have heard before. Um, and so explaining that process and being able to tap into the spiritual power of the four cups can help us to actually see how we can look at greater outcomes through fitness as well. And um, I, for those, I guess, that aren't familiar with the book, the, the four cups include the cup of salvation, cup of deliverance, cup of redemption, and the cup of fulfillment. Um, so, you know, we can, of course, talk about that as we get together a little later. I just wanted to introduce you to the terminology a little bit. But that was information that was given to Moses and the Israelites from God. Um, and those that process of going through each one of, of those four cups helps to um, further our faith as individuals as well as helps us collectively um, as children of God and of people of faith to be able to um, to live lives that are, are, are greatly different and, and optimized by um, the power of God living in us. So the hope for our class, of course, is, is going to be for us to take that process and actually apply uh, the four cups to fitness outcomes. Wow! So you're you're making the bold claim, and we're making the bold claim that the missing link between the promises of the Bible and all the promises that Jesus did all those days is is, is wrapped in those four cups. Absolutely. I think there's wow. a reason why there's so many people that are familiar um, with Exodus or that are familiar with Passover, and why culture talks so much um, about that story, and I think it's because there is a, a lot of hidden wisdom um, within those pages. Yeah. Well, that is very, very excited. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know about y'all, but just in the last ten minutes, um, we've been talking about that. I've never been more excited about life, about the possibilities um, than I've been just in that one second of listening to that. Um, so we open the call back up. Thank you, Taylor, for sharing that. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions or anything like that? No, except we just come, do we do any exercises while we're there or stretching or two in addition to the other parts? Good question. We will actually not be working out uh, in this, in this um, series. We are just going to be creating a plan. So what you will walk away with is a solid plan. And that's what we're encouraging all of you to do, is to take the month of June in class and out of class to create a plan, uh, a solid plan, and lay it over these four cups and then implement your plan. Um, so to answer your question, though, we will not be actually physically working out, but we will give you the resources so that you can go ahead and take your fitness to its next level. And, and, okay, good. Uh, and then, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And we, we are lining up people with each of the four cups that, um, you, if you want to tell them a little bit about that, that are in the club or outside of the club, whatever, that are uh, experts as well, that are going to tell you, like the first one, for instance, we've got the, uh, Dana coming up at the mm-hmm. yoga instructor at the club and also at her church, and she's going to talk a little bit about stretch and balance, which is one of the passions that Martin has. So if you, maybe that <laughs> all of them. I'm passionate all of them. <laughs> what? Yeah. all of them. I hadn't told Carrie this, uh-huh. uh, but I'm, sh- I'm very confident that Carrie will be a major um, part of our component of discussion on the second week, which is strength. Um, right. I'm sure she can talk about all four of them, no doubt about it, um, but certainly we definitely want her input on, on, the, on the second week. Yeah, strength. Any other questions? Quickly, or, think- uh, hmm? I was going to say really quickly, I think it might help if we kind of ex- express that. So, you know, granted, we just list out the four cups that are listed in the book, but what we're doing is now, you know, again, applying this to fitness outcomes. So our first week uh, together, we'll handle cup one, and the cup one on the fitness end, we, Martin and I have kind of termed detoxification. And so we'll look at 
three areas under uh, detoxification, whether we're talking about food, body work, or soul work as it relates to that. Then the second week we'll talk about strength, um, again, looking at those three areas, food, body work, and soul. Uh, the third cup we're going to talk about uh, restoration, and again, looking at those three areas underneath it. And then the fourth being protection. So every week we're kind of going to talk about something related to food, body work, and soul development. And um, and so that way, hopefully, we're, we're getting a, a balanced portfolio of things that we can do um, to strengthen ourselves in a variety of ways. Good. That's, that's great. That's a good, yeah, a good explanation. All right. Well, before we wrap up, uh, is there any other questions? Oh, well, I, I didn't know if you had solidified anything with Jim. Uh, I mentioned to it the other day that uh, I, I believe he says it, it's going to be this case, but I believe the club would be accessible to anyone in the group that is not a, a member uh, all day, the Sundays that we are in session. So if they did want to come and try a class or something, I think a group, you know, free group fitness or something like that, um, you know, like a like a yoga class or a Zumba class or something. Um, he, he had mentioned that he would have a list of everyone that's in our group. I don't know if you went further with that with them, Martin, or if we need to explore that later. No, no, I, I think you're you're absolutely right on. We basically the gym would be open to you all day if you wanted to use the gym. We've got a great swimming pool. You could work out. So if those of you that want to work out, you could work out before or after. Definitely child care is available um, for pretty much every age. The gym is like 100,000 square feet, so they're, they'll definitely find something to do or someone to hang out with. And um, there's a formal daycare there, too. So, yeah, and Tim's very much uh, on board with, with helping us. Uh, and we have the spa and the cafe, of course. And um, also, um, I, I guess we can work it out, but, I'm, you know, do you all be nervous if you don't have a big one before? It looks like a giant. I have building that's impersonal. It's actually extremely personal and we're one to welcome and okay, I'm very excited to, to introduce you to it as well. And so I will definitely be at the front to make everybody happy. <laughs> and when you come in and I, I'm sure Mark and Kayla will be there too. So we'll 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 get you in the club and make sure that you're comfortable uh getting to where we're going because it is like you said, it's a big it's a big um this facility, but it's actually very warm and friendly, so we, we're uh, looking forward, very forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, very, very much so. So, we will, again, we'll, our first meeting will be next week at 4 p.m. on Sunday at Lifetime, which is at Vestavia. Uh, if you have problems, you know, finding whatever, just Google or call us and we'll let you there. Um, and if that's it, I think I'd love to end on prayer. Um, Dion, let me know if you're uncomfortable with this, but I know that you had led a group um, before. Uh, would you mind closing us in prayer? If you're there. Uh, did you say Dion? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I just made it. <laughs> Let me go in the other room. Yes, I will. Okay, you have to be quiet for mommy, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, dear Father God, I just want to thank you so much for just bringing us together in fellowship. Lord God, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, for loving us, and just for keeping us, Lord God, as we go throughout our day. Lord, as we got up this morning, as we ate breakfast, as we fellowship with our family, Lord God, but also as we went along our day. And so, Lord God, I just want to thank you. Just be in, in a place of thanksgiving, just being thankful for everything that you're doing for us, everything that we see everything that we don't see, but, Lord God, also all the things that you are doing in the background. So, Lord God, just keep us um, keep us strong, keep us strong in faith, not just keeping us strong in faith, but keeping us strong in our mental spaces, keeping us strong emotionally, keeping us strong physically. And so, Lord God, I just want to thank you for just bringing us together, bringing us together in fellowship to just be here together as Christians, being here to lift up the name of God and lift up the name of Jesus. But also, Lord God, to just make our bodies whole, knowing that making our body whole is not just about um, eating right, but, Lord God, it's about coming together and understanding what all those things will make us healthy holistically, having a spiritual holistically healthy, having a financially healthy life, having an emotionally healthy life, having 
of good, having good relationships, Lord God, and most importantly, Lord God, being able to keep our bodies strong so that we can go on and use the gifts that you've given us so we can continue to do your work. Lord God, be with us, be with, be with us this week as we go throughout. Let us be able to not just use our strengths for ourselves, but most importantly, use them for your good. Let us be able to hear you even in the midst of the chaos and the noise and the busyness and the work. Let us be able to hear you. Let us be able to hear what the Holy Spirit has for us and what he wants us to do and how he wants us to move in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I ask that you just be with everyone and give them joy. When we feel that we're low, when we feel that we don't know what to do, let us always remember that you are there with us that you've never left us, and you will always be there to strengthen us. And, Lord God, just let us go away with joy. Let us always remember to lift each other up in prayer. All these things I want to continue to ask you for, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dion. Thank you. So with that said, I'll send you you an email just as a a recap, but uh, if you need anything, just call us. Anything you need, just let us know. Email, text, Facebook. We're there. We love you guys, and we will uh, talk to you later. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, little one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>